Hey y'all, Lauren Wilde, the Church Witch here. I wanted to do a quick video on the pagan holiday Yule slash winter solstice, right? So we are coming very much to the rebirth of the year in terms of the wheel of the year. Samhain, which is Halloween, um, is the death of the year, you know, in terms of the witches. Um, belief system, I guess you would say, but really it's just very ancestral. So what I have here is like putting together my own Yule log. Okay. So traditionally the Yule log was, um, the end of a big Christmas tree, essentially the big, a big Christmas tree that they would put in the fire to keep burning in the house, you know, to keep it warm and to have bright light because um, Yule, which is winter solstice, is the darkest day slash night of the year, all right? So it is part of the wheel of the year where um, it is the darkest day, but also flips to the lighter part of the year, whereas Litha, which is the, uh, the pagan um, Sabbath that is exactly opposite of it, which is in um, June, is Litha, and that is the longest day of the year, but also turns the wheel of the year over to the darker part of the year, right? So they teach us balance. They teach us how to live cyclically, right? So what I wanted to share was a little bit of what I'm going to be doing for my ritual. I've had a couple of people be like, what am I doing? I don't have a fireplace. I don't either. I have a fake one. Um, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, right? So I, um, this is the first year that I'm going to practice this one ritual. Uh, because I have three kids and this is the first year that I don't actually have my kids on um, on the solstice, uh, which makes me incredibly sad, but I can participate in this a little bit easier than if I didn't, and you'll know why in a second. So I'm going to turn off all the lights in my house um, starting around, I don't know, 6 p.m. on Sunday, and I'm only going to use candlelight. I'm not going to get on my phone or my internet or anything, and I'm just going to sit with natural light um, and appreciate, you know, the death and the rebirth um, because they're both and, you know, anytime you're working any type of feminine spirituality, real feminine spirituality, I'm going to move that closer so you can see better. Um, real feminine spirituality is circular and cyclical, right? So like the Arboros, it's it's always the end is always the beginning. The beginning is always the end. There's never really one or the other, right? So let me show you what I got here. Um, oh, wait, 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 let me finish. Sorry, squirrel. Um, so in terms of my ritual, um, I'm going to light candles, you know, to really initiate it. So previously when I've done ritual around this with family or friends, um, everybody will get a little tea light and we will start the ritual off with it really dark in the room. Um, and then there's a mother candle, right? Which is like the big candle that everybody kind of seeds their intention into, um, in the darkness, right? And we have in this world, our, our very Western mindset, evangelical world have created this sense of negativity around the idea of darkness. And, you know, as a shadow worker and a witch, Part of my great work is to help restore the sanctity and the ceremony of darkness. It's a part of us. We would not know light without darkness, right? We always have contrast in this 3D dual world. So it's about understanding that we are we are growing okay with the stillness. We are growing okay with the not knowing. We're okay with the liminal space because from, uh, from Samhain to Yule is very liminal space. It's the space between the death and the rebirth. And it's six weeks of just like, I don't know what's up or down. Um, and it's always a weird time, right? Uh, it's like, you know, being in the chrysalis and something new is coming out. Um, so, you know, what, what we are working with here is, is appreciation for stillness, appreciation for slowness, appreciation for um, cycles and, and natural seasons, right? Within ourselves, within others, and within the world, and within nature. Um, and so at around 6 p.m., I'm going to turn off all my lights and turn off my phone, all of that. Um, and I'm just going to be with what is, okay? So let's go ahead and get to what I want to show you. So what I have is this big plate that I got at like Home Goods, And I went on a hike with my partner, Justin, 
and I found this fallen branch um, in this person's yard. They had an aspen, which was crazy. Um, and I was like, I'm taking that. And then on that walk, I also picked up juniper that has these juniper berries um, and then some sort of pine. And then I found these fallen um, pine cones. So this could be something that could be great, you know, like a, a spirit walk or a silent meditation of just seeing what you can find that has fallen in nature, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put candles on it. So you can go a couple of different ways. There's these little tea lights that you can get. I got, you know, they're like cypress and pine, like home goods. And you could, you could line them up like up here, you know, make it beautiful. That's part of it is the crafting, the ritual put your intention into it, right? The other thing that you could do, um, so, you know, you could also put like four candles to honor the directions, right? The north, the south, the east, the west, whatever. Have fun with it. Like, let it be intuitive. That's part of the witchery is it letting it be creative. Um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, you can use your ethane or um, anything that you have, your ceremonial knife. And then I've got some little taper candles right? I got a red one and some white ones because um, I'm very Libra in that way that I must have balance, right? And so what you can do is, especially if you have essential oils or herbs, um, like even olive oil, you just, you know, you want to bless it. You want to anoint it. Um, the, the different directions, you would anoint yourself, right? You can even do that before you start. If you have some, some, something like frankincense or rosemary or juniper, um, it has very cleansing, ceremonial, sacred energy to it. Uh, but what you would do is you just take your non-dominant palm. I'm using Release Oil by Young Living. If it wants to come out. Yep, just one drop. I'm going to activate it doing a couple of, I guess I need to go counterclockwise. we got some more release work to do. It's never ending. Um, and then I'm going to take this candle and I am going to rub it. If you have any herbs or things like that, you know, you can roll them in it and dress your candle. Just please be mindful that if you have a lot of herbs on it, you want to watch the candle. You want to be present because it can it can be dangerous around, you know, and cause fires. So you just want to watch that. Um, and then you would take your ceremonial knife and you would write something, you know, that you are releasing on your candle. And when you're ready, you can burn it. So I teach a lot about candle magic in my coven and in my apprenticeship for sure this time of the year because we're entering the hearth part of the year. Um, but you know, you can Google things like that, but I would anoint my candles and then what you're going to do is you're going to take, I have this candle that I'm using to hold up. So I would take this candle right here like this. I need to get one of those like social media light things. I got the end of the candle. Okay. I got the end of the candle and I'm making it melt. Also, if you have like a handy if you, if you are handy or you have a handy person in your life, you can also um, have them Dremel into this. But essentially what you're gonna do, I'm not gonna be able to do this with a while holding this, um, is you're going to hold a light over it and let it drip really well so that you can like stick it on there and then you have three candles that you would stick on it. It's gonna take me longer than the 10 minutes I'm allowed to do and actually save it to Instagram. So. Um, but you could use something like a Dremel or uh, a power tool to put a small hole in the branch and then stick it in there and light it and boom, you got a Yule log. Now, traditionally, you would throw this in the fire. If you don't have a fireplace, that's totally fine. Um, my partner and I are going to do a bonfire. So we're going to go outside. I'm going to put all of this, right? All of it. I might save a couple of sprigs from the ceremony for a spell jar later. Um, but and all of it, I'm going to burn even the log, um, any papers, the, anything that I know I want to release before I step into the new year. Um, but I'm going to save a little piece of the Yule log to burn next year because our ancestors tell us that that is safety, protection, and good luck. So uh, one last thing is that if you don't know what to do in terms of what you need to release, you can always rely on your tarot or your oracle deck to ask within, you know, what needs to be released fully and what am I birthing in 2021, right? As the next part of the wheel turns and we, and we start over anew. Hopefully this was helpful, y'all. Let me know. See you later. Bye.